Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is tips number 715, which is part 4, the final part of this four-part series on making a set of swivel jaws for a vise. And today we'll concentrate on making this relatively simple part, the pin that holds the two together, or should I say separates them and allows them to swivel or swing. This part may seem unnecessarily complicated to you, and you can simplify it. I'll show you ways of doing that, but the purpose of the enlarged ends is to hold it captive so it can't slide or fall out of there. And the reason that I put these undercuts in there, and that was really my design, was just to make it easier for you to square the shoulder off when you turn this. So you do not necessarily have to put these undercuts in there. Although I think it makes it easier. And we'll start with a piece of 5 8 material. And uh, I'll put a center hole in it to support it. Let's go over to the closing lathe. But let's take a glance at the drawing first. Notice now that the ends are turned just a little bit less than 5 8 to down, down to uh, 0 0.6 10 gives you a little bit of a, a clearance there. The overall length is less than one inch, again, so that you have some clearance. Look at the distance here between the two shoulders. It's approximately 0.768. And the undercuts are going to be 330 seconds wide or whatever cutoff tool or parting tool that you use. That's not critical at all. And the diameter here is just a little bit less than half inch. All right, now we will go over to the lathe. Five eight stock in the three jaw chuck, already faced and center drilled to support it with the center, and that is probably optional. But I always think that you need good support when you're turning slender work. I'm going to do the layout on the surface plate here, just three lines. That could be done on the lathe as well. And the first line for that flange is a hundred and four thousandths. I'm looking at the drawing. And the second line is 0.872. You can see what I'm doing here by comparing it to the finished pin. And the final line is 0.976, which is the height of the finished pin. Back to the closing lathe. Your layout, of course, could be done right on the machine using a caliper or a ruler and a scribe. Some of these dimensions are not really that critical. First, I'll make the undercuts, and for some reason that dimension is not on the drawing, but I'm going to make them 7 16 and I'm just using a little caliper for that purpose. A 332nd cutoff tool. You could use an eighth inch. And now I will turn this down to one half inch and you can see how the undercuts here help. I'm using a triangular insert. Using the cutoff tool, I'm going to mark my line here, which will soon be obliterated, because these two end pieces need to be turned down just a little bit for clearance. So I'm just marking right now. The diameter here and here needs to be 0.610. Again, not critical just for clearance. And now I will cut it off. Now I still have a center in here, so I'll leave the center engaged until I 
get to almost the point where it drops off, but I do like to have it supported. All right, there it is. Perfect fit, and if you follow the dimensions, yours will be too. Let me point out now about relief. You see, I wanted that to be a little bit below the surface, and it is, and same thing on this side. And also with a piece of paper inserted in there, you can see that there is clearance. One thing I see that is a flaw in the design of this, it would be very easy to lose this piece because it is not captive. Also, because of the little flanges on the end, it made this hole unnecessarily complicated, and this piece also. So I made a mock up here. This is just a piece of scrap steel where I took a piece of half inch stock and I sweat soldered it into a half hole. Still rough on this side. But that would be one possibility is to, uh, that's soft solder now. Sweat soldered in there, then you wouldn't lose the piece. It would be simpler to make, but uh, another possibility is to put a cap screw in there, this counterboard that would hold this piece in place. Then it would be simplified, just a little bar of half inch stock and a simple half inch hole right here. So just thinking about different ways of doing things. I may have mentioned earlier in the video one of the chapters that there's a really an easier way of making this than what I showed you. Not that it's all that difficult and it is a little bit of fun and challenging to put those undercuts in there. Okay let's look at an alternative way of doing this and it's simpler but it probably takes just as much time. I'm not sure. Do it either way. But start with a piece of half inch stock to replace this and Make yourself two little rings that will be either pressed on or held on with Loctite. And the rings are easy enough to make. Just take a piece of 5 8 stock, drill it and then ream it half inch as this piece and slice it off so it's about 95 thousandths thick. No burrs allowed. And just a little of the green Loctite on each end. And there it is. I'll be back in a half hour after the Loctite sets. Okay, it's 45 minutes later. I believe the Loctite has set up. And we want just a little bit of end play, but yet we do not want the pin to stick up beyond the surface of the jaw. So there it is, an alternative way of doing that. I don't know why, but I always make an extra. Is everybody happy? I haven't asked that question lately. Now the project is essentially done. If you made this out of tool steel, it is time to heat treat it. It probably is not a useful project if it has not been hardened. And the other possibility, of course, is to carburize it or case harden it with caseonite or some other similar product and that gives it a hardness of uh, you know a couple thousandths a, a skin of a the piece that is what I'm saying is the piece gets hardened just on the surface 
Well, as mentioned here, surface hardening compound. Thank you again to these three men for assisting me and collaborating with me on this project. Remember that you can go to myheap.com and print out the drawing. Thank you to Joe Hildreth for supporting that site. Well, that completes this project. Thank you for watching all four parts, and I'll see you next time.